I guess for some of us, the thought of a three-hour coffee break is the stuff of dreams. But for the founder of one American company, it was, hopefully, going to mean the end of a horrible nightmare. Having experienced the Italian coffee culture, this American entrepreneur returned home to build one of the world's largest coffee chains. His products soon became a vital part of everyday life, with coffee shops opening throughout the whole of North America. However, the dream soon became a nightmare, when instead of being greeted with the aroma of freshly roasted coffee, customers ordering their morning latte were more likely to be confronted with the smell of burnt cheese sandwiches. Employees had lost sight of the original vision, and the founder was left with no other option but to call time on the whole operation. Asking shop managers to post a simple note on the door that read, We're taking time out to perfect our espresso. Thousands of coffee shops across North America took a three-hour coffee break. The loss of revenue and the possible effect on customer relations was huge. But if taking time out meant the employees returned to what the founder had originally intended, then this was a price worth paying. So here's the question. If God is the founder of all humanity and our daily activities give off an aroma, do you think he'd want us to take time out to rethink the way we do life? It's reckoned that the average person will, during their lifetime, spend 20 years asleep, 10 years watching television reruns, 7 years eating and drinking, six years in some form of transport, six months waiting at traffic lights, and 18 months in the bathroom. So the reality is, most people will spend more time sitting at traffic lights than talking about spiritual matters. And your point is? Well, there's this awkward verse in the Bible that says, humanity has missed God's target like an arrow falling short of its intended goal, men and women are, in God's eyes, missing the point. Mobile phones are created to communicate. Yes, they play music, take photographs, give guidance and store facts. But first and foremost, they were made to communicate. But take the SIM card out of a phone and it dies. It might still look good and on the outside appear to be okay. But the bottom line is, it's unable to function as the maker intended. So what if, as humans, we were first and foremost created to communicate with God? And somehow, by an act of self-will, we removed the SIM card and rendered ourselves spiritually dead. We might look okay on the outside, but we're totally incapable of communicating with our maker. If that's true, isn't it worth talking about? Whoa, hang on a minute. Talking about coffee and mobile phones is one thing, but a God I can't see is something else. Seeing is believing. So how do you expect me to believe in an unseen God? But the reality is, we can't see gas, electricity, gravity or love. But in one way or another, we feel the effects of these things on our life. It doesn't take a quantum leap of faith to believe in electricity. Because whether someone's told us about it, or we felt its effect, no one would deny its existence, even though it's invisible. And it's the unseen side of life that those who call themselves Christ followers would love the opportunity to talk about. Given the chance, they'd love to share their story of how the unseen God has totally transformed their lives. Ask any beekeeper the secret of a successful hive and they'll probably tell you that it's all down to one basic instinct, a golden rule that says, when you find something good, don't keep it to yourself, tell others about it. But when honeybees find a plentiful source of nectar, their first response is to hurry back to the hive. Refusing to keep their discovery to themselves, they feel this urgent need to share the good news. 
Without the power of speech, these incredible creatures communicate their findings by doing a dance. A kind of jubilant jive that explains the exact distance and direction others will need to take to find what they themselves have discovered. So in the same way the honeybees share the whereabouts of the best nectar, those who call themselves followers of Jesus Christ would love to share what they themselves have discovered. So maybe, like the world-famous coffee house, we should ask ourselves the question, has humanity drifted away from what the founder originally intended? If so, do we need to take time out to rethink the way we do life? Spending six months of our life sitting at traffic lights is one thing, but what about giving some time to talk about spiritual matters? If humanity was created to communicate with God, and by an act of self-will we've removed the SIM card, rendering ourselves spiritually dead, wouldn't that be something you'd want to talk about? And while we might not fully understand the unseen, does that make it any less real? For no matter how unbelievable, surely eternal issues deserve a few minutes of our time. If any of these questions require an answer, then maybe, just maybe, it's time for humanity to wake up and smell the coffee.